spirit to stir the church. And last night they prayed a prayer for me that God give me such a supernatural rest. And I tell you, I didn't almost want to get up this morning. <laughs> I had asked for that early wake-up call because I like to just get up early and talk to God about the service. And when I heard that phone ringing, I said, I might have should have asked for an hour later because I was resting so good. I looked at the clock and I said, I believe I can lay here 15 more minutes before I had to get up. Amen. But I rested so good, and I just want to say thank y'all for your prayers, for praying for me. Amen. All right, get your Bibles. I tell you, I've been feeling good. I feel real, feel really, really good this morning. I don't know. I just, I just got up and felt good today. I didn't feel tired. You know, I drove in Friday. I was a little tired, but I went. Just had enough time to get to the room, kind of get myself together to get here. Amen. So I was a little tired, but I was feeling good and last night. But I just got up this morning. It was just something different about this morning when I got up. I just got up with the joy of the Lord in my spirit. I opened up the curtain and saw the sunshine. I said, oh, Lord, it's such a beautiful day outside. <laughs> it wasn't like the sun was shining yesterday when I got up. It was the same sun and it was hot. But for some reason, the sun looked so beautiful to me this morning. I said, look, God, it's just such a beautiful day outside. I said, I just feel real good for some reason. I said, Lord, I thank you. I feel rejuvenated for some reason. I, I just don't know. I tell you, I didn't know Mother Williams was driving up. I tell you, I, it made me even feel better when I saw her and Sister Brenda. She said, sitting over here. Amen. I thank the Lord and the mother getting a little birthday thing. I tell you, it's good to celebrate. It's good to celebrate and celebrate while we living. A lot of people wait till you're dead, then they celebrate and they say all good things about, well, I tell you, she was so good. Oh, I loved it. But she ain't hearing none of that. He ain't hearing none of that. So while we have time to celebrate each other, let's celebrate each other while we're living. Tell your sister, your mama, your dad, and your brother, you know I love you today. I don't know why. I just want to let you know I love you. I just want to let you know I appreciate you. And that goes so far. Sometimes we just don't realize how far thank you can go. Sometimes just a thank you make people feel good. And it don't hurt nothing to tell somebody thank you or to tell them I appreciate you what God is doing in your life. And you've been a blessing to me. Amen. I appreciate the Lord. Amen. For two days, we've been preaching on restoration. And uh, for those that haven't been here, let me just kind of summarize it quick to kind of bring you up to where we at. Amen. We was talking about the spirit of restoration in the book of Joel. Amen. Joel uh, spoke of an invasion, naturally so, of locusts and caterpillars and canker worm that was coming into the nation because of the ways that they had turned their back on God. He said, God going to cause a nation of, of bugs to come in and eat up and devour everything. But what I like about God is that even though he chastened us and he has a way of chastening us to bring us back to him, he don't forget us or he don't leave us stuck out there. After the invasion come in, God looks down and he feels sorry for his people. He pity his people. He see they going through some things. They've lost some things. They can't hardly come out of. So then Joel speaks again and said, God say, I'm getting ready to restore. He said, everything that the canker worm, the locust, the caterpillar has eaten, he said, I'm going to restore it back unto you. I'm going to give it back everything that they have taken from you. Amen. I begin to look at Webster this, a definition of uh, restoration. I told you it was the action of returning something to a former owner, place, or condition. That's, that's okay. That's fine. Webster and his knowledge was okay. But I got the biblical de definition for restoration. It means to receive back more than what has been lost to the point where the final state is greater than the original condition. The main point is that someone or something is approved above measure. Now, that's what God really wants to do in our life. Amen. Pastor David said something really special this morning about she got an over above measure 
blessing. God give us above measure. He said, now my God can do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we ask or think according, according to the power. Where is the power? The power is in us according to the power that work it in us. So restoration brings us into a greater place than what we had. Last night we began to minister on the Shumanite woman, amen, that took in the man of God and took care of him and God spoke a word through the prophet Elijah and said she would bring forth, amen, a son at the time of the season. God did what he said he would do. Come to pass, amen, that she does bring forth the child, but the son dies, amen. But Elisha goes in there and begins to minister and pray for the boy, amen, and the boy is restored back to life. Amen. As he begins to talk, amen, amen, the, uh, Elijah goes to the same Shumanite woman, amen, and speaks a word in her life and tell her to leave the land because famine was coming in the land. He said, be gone for seven years, but after seven years, you can come back home. When she came back home, the Bible said that she goes to the king and asks for her land, amen, and that at that same time she's asking for a land, here is the same servant, Gehazi, standing in front of the king telling the king about this very woman that Elijah gave a miracle to at the exact time, amen, she came to cry for a land. Here is Gehazi saying something. He said, here is this woman that I'm talking about that Elijah gave a miracle to. He said, that's the boy right there. When she cries out, the king appoints an officer and said, give her back everything that she had. And for the last seven years, don't just give her land back, but give her back seven years of increase. So we found that the God is getting ready to give us back more he always gives back more than what we lost so today I want to just pick up today a man on recovery restoration and recovery amen get your Bibles and turn with me to the book of first Samuel because I believe that restoration and recovery go hand in hand when you get one you get the other Amen. Actually, recovery means the same as, as restoration. It means to restore lost things or to regain position or to make up an expense of a loss. How many know that God is positioning us right now for this move of God that's getting ready to take forth? If I said last night, amen, six represents the number of man, amen, but then seven, amen, it's the middle of, look past, almost half a year gone already. We'll soon be going into 2017, and I said that's going to be the year that the church, I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost going to be pulled out in the church, but before there's an anointing being poured out the church has got to be restored we have got to get back to God we have got to get back to the principle of God somewhere along the line the church lost their stir and somewhere some of the church got off track but I thank God that he's bringing us back and not only is he bringing us back to him he's given us more than we ever had before now what I had years ago I thank God for it because it stirred my heart it kept me uh, it kept me praying it kept me seeking God I thank God for what I so in the early part of my ministry I thank God for in the middle of my ministry amen what he has done for me as I said the other night 31 years I've been preaching the gospel and you know what the Lord said the best of my ministry is yet to come because I'm looking for God to do something greater I'm still believing God for signs wonders and miracles early in my ministry I had dreams and visions and I could see myself walking through places and see the dead being raised the Bible said you shall raise the dead somewhere we're going to do the greater works of God because Jesus said greater works shall you do and why because we have the Holy Ghost uh, we have the power of God we are lagging behind in the church but it's time for the church to catch up uh, and hallelujah it's time for us to catch up with what God is getting ready to do and I'm believing him that this is the hour I've been feeling it that God is getting the people ready and it's going to be a people that's done been through some things. It's going to be some people that done had some hard tests and trials. It ain't going to be no easy people that feel like they just done made it or any way go. But you're going to know this move. You're going to know it ain't going to be by nothing you've done. It's going to be by the hand of God. 
We're going to see this move of God we've been crying out for, we've been praying for, we've been looking for. Some of us been praying for children for years, for family members for years. But this is our season and time. God is preparing us, getting us ready for those that's getting ready to come in off the streets. When they come in, we need to be ready. So I say our bodies need to be ready. Our spirit need to be ready because when this generation come in, we're living in a generation that don't hardly know God. We just tell the truth. They don't hardly know. They, they don't know what we know because when we got it, it was something different that got us. Man, when we got it, it's something that pushed us and somewhere down the line, the word began to be watered down. And now people don't feel like that you have to change to do something for God. And then we have a word preached that you are right like you are. And then the church has no victory. People are coming in and out the church with no victory. Because they just didn't get it like we got it. We got it on our knees. We got it fasting and praying. And I know some of us say that's, that's just old time. Honey, you better believe that's what kept us. It's keeping us today. Them prayers keeping us today. So we got to show this generation how to get to God. They don't know how to get there themselves. It's going to take us. We are the light of the world. We got to show them a real, a true, and a living God. One that can keep you out of the crack house. One that can deliver you from alcohol. We got to show them this Jesus that's able to do everything. There's no failure in him today. Somewhere we maybe fail, but there's no failure in God. We got to show them the love of God. They got to recognize love when they see it. Not to beat nobody up when they come through the door. That's the time to show them the greatest love. You see somebody come in off the street, no matter how they looking. We need to show them love. We need to let them know that God loves them. God wants them to be made whole. God wants deliverance in their life. And when they get that word that day, we got to follow up. Because they don't have keeping power where they sell. We got to follow up and check on them and make sure they're doing all right. The young man has been coming. I don't see him tonight, today. Let's follow up. Just check on him. Because God want to do something for him. But the enemy don't want him to get it. And I can tell he them two nights he's been reaching out in these services. He's been blessed. And I can tell God want to do something. God want to bring total deliverance in life. And the enemy want to trick him. That's what the devil do. Time of word get planted. You'll see. Say immediately the seed is sown. Then come the enemy and try to take it out of your heart. He don't want you to get that deliverance. So it's going to take us that know what God can do to go by and just check on him. And let him know you love him. Let him know the ministry love him. Amen. Tell him I ask about him and I'm praying for him. I see God going to do some things. He going to help this church. He going to be a help to this church. Amen. Because he going through a struggle. And when that struggle get off of him, he going to help somebody. He going to draw some people. It ain't nothing like when you done been through a struggle, you know how to help people. Thank you, Lord. We're going to the book of 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter. And I ain't going to be before you long. The word reads from the verse, first verse, and it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziglag and has smitten Ziglag and burned it with fire. Now listen, the Bible said it come to pass when David and his men came in. David was working or David was in the Philistine army. After Saul was hard on his heels, David joined himself to the Philistines. The Philistines took David in. And David went to battle with them. David served under them. And went with them, but at this particular time, when the Philistines got ready to go to battle, they looked back there and saw David and said, we don't want him going to battle with us. Because he's coming up against Saul. He said, how we know in the middle of the battle that he won't turn on us? So the captain goes and tells David, you got to go back home. David asked the question, what have I done? Have I not been faithful? He said, yeah, if you served me faithfully, but the laws of the Philistine don't favor you. They don't want you going with us. Now, it's strange sometimes we can be on the battlefield and the devil tearing our house up. We can be preaching to others or we can be ministering to others, and yet we got chaos in our house. 
Here it is. David goes back home, and when he get there, the Malachites done been through his house or been through his land. They have burned the whole city down and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not either any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. Even though he came back to Ziglag, everything naturally was gone. It was burned down. But what I like about God, here it is, even though they burned the, the, the town down, the city down, they took the winning captive. They didn't kill nobody. The enemy, he can burn some stuff in, the, in our life, but he can't have us. We've hedged about God has a hedge about his people, just like with Job. He could do everything he wanted to do, but he could not have Job's soul. So David's wives and the men that went with him out to battle, everything that they had possessed was gone, but their families were taken. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Sometimes the enemy, he captivates our children. The closest thing to you is what the devil works on. If they don't know Christ, if it could be the, it could be the husband, if he don't know Christ, he's going to be working on you. The devil use him. They, not that they don't love you, but the enemy tries to get into the thing that you love the most to work on you. So here it is. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. Look, they cried so too they could not get another tear out. I don't know about nobody else. I've been there. That I cried so much that I couldn't even cry no more till I just laid my head over on the table and just asked God to help me because I didn't know what to do. Tears just coming out, then you just cry to, you just get so weak to, you just don't know what to do. Life does that to you sometimes. You don't know what to do sometimes. The Bible said the spirit makes intercession for us with moaners and groaners, which are not can be other. Sometimes you just have to moan. But I'm so glad that I serve a God that understands that language. He understands the language of mourning. He know what a moan saying. You don't know what you're saying in the moan, but your spirit saying, Lord, I need some help. Lord, I need deliverance. I need you to help my, my child, Lord. You ain't saying a word. You just moaning. But in the spirit, God picking up their child need deliverance. They, they need help in their body. They, they need money to make it. Amen. So our spirit mourns for us. And sometimes they, we just weep and they wept till they didn't even have no more strength to weep. And David, two wives were taken captives. Aninamon, the Jezerites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmonite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. Listen, and David was greatly distressed. Not, not just that, but David was going through. He out on the battlefield. He's winning, hallelujah, he's winning uh, nations, and he's defeating armies for the Philistines. He's out there working on the battlefield, and he's stressed out now. Sometimes the life will just stress you out if you ain't got God. You don't, you don't know what to do. So David's in the midst. He's stressed out, but not only that, the people putting stress on him. The very ones that's out on the battlefield with him, now they're talking about, I need to kill him. Because if I hadn't been following him, I'd have been here and my family wouldn't have been took. My wife wouldn't be gone. My son wouldn't be gone. My daughter wouldn't be gone. They talk about stoning David. But look, their lives were spared. They took the wives and the children. It didn't say nothing about the men. So they were in a good place when it happened. Even though they didn't realize that they was in the best place that it was. They were not in the city, so they didn't get killed. So their lives were spared, and then their children were taken captives. But the Bible said, but David encouraged himself in the Lord. It, it's going to come a time that you're going to have to encourage your own self. God will put you there. Will look like you can't get a hold to nobody. He'll put you in a place where you don't even know who to call. You don't know what to do. So you're going to have to encourage your own self. Sometimes we're waiting on somebody else to come tell us, you know, God's going to do it for you. 
But sometimes you need to speak to your own self. Encourage your own self in the Lord. Tell yourself I'm coming out of this. I tell y'all now, I look in the mirror. I said, girl, you coming out. I look and say, you know you a bad sister. You know you blessed. Speak to your own self. Let your reflection talk back to you. Get in the mirror and let the mirror tell the mirror, I know I'm blessed. I know God is using me. I know God going to do great things for me. And look at yourself while you saying it. Encourage yourself. Pat your own self on the back. Say, go on, sister. You can make it. Brother, you can do it. David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Abathar, the priest of uh, Imelach's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abathar brought thither the ephod to David. When David encouraged himself, he fell straight. Then he said, bring me my robe. Bring me my priestly garment. Everybody should have a priestly garment. If it ain't nothing but a scarf to put around you. I take scarves and lay over them and pray over them and different stuff sometimes. And, hey, man, it's just good to have a good prayer cloth. You'll never know when the enemy going to come in. Sometimes the prayers over that cloth. Hey, man, I was telling Pastor Davis about I, I struggled with some things this year. Hey, man, I, I actually saw the real enemy. Hey, man, real enemy come in. Hey, man, in, in my daughter. I ask the saints to pray for her, and I'm continuing to pray for her because I believe God. I know he got a call on her life. She's going to do some great things for God. But actually, a witchcraft spirit, amen, got a hold to her. And that's the hardest spirit it is to pray off of people because you have to denounce witchcraft. But I tell you, I prayed and I prayed, and I got this earthly garment out that God give me. I begin to wrap her in it. She begin to cry out. Amen. She said, I don't want that on me. I was like, I start praying harder. I was wrapping that thing tighter. The most she was saying, get that thing. I don't want it on me. You know, I start wrapping it tighter. I start pleading the blood. I said, the blood of Jesus is against you. You have no power here. The enemy tried to give you a stroke here, tried to give you a heart attack. Hey Amen. I told the devil, I looked in flies. I recognize who you are. You will not stroke me out. You will not give me a heart. You're going to be subject. You're going to do what I say. You're going to be subject to the will of God. You're going to be subject to the power of God. I plead the blood against you. There's nothing you can do with the blood. I recognize the enemy can't do nothing with the blood. We as saints need to get back to pleading the blood. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. You have no power. He called for his priestly garment, said, bring me my effort. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, shall I pursue after this trooper? Shall I overtake them? Then when he got on his priestly garment, amen, he encouraged himself in God. He's got his feet planted back on God again. He asked God a question. Actually, he asked God two questions. The first question that David said, shall I pursue after this troop? We need to start asking God some questions. God, what do you need me to do? God, where do you want me to go? God, who do you want me to talk to today? Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him. Look, we're getting answered back to him. Pursue. Tell somebody pursue. God getting ready. God telling somebody pursue after what the enemy has taken for you. He said pursue for thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail recover all. He said pursue after them for thou shalt surely overtake her. When you overtake something, you take over. How do what you're doing now? The devil been overtaking some of us, but we getting ready to overtake her. We getting ready to get back her. What God has given unto us, and without fail, that that's a great word. God said, without fail, hallelujah, you shall recover all. Tell somebody I'm recovering all. I feel I'm in, I'm in the recovery stage right now. I'm getting ready to recover all. I know it's been looking a little dull. It's been looking like we ain't getting much. It's been looking like we ain't coming out. But I declare today without fail, we getting ready as a body of Christ, as a people of God, we getting ready to recover all. So David went, he and the 600 men that were with him and came to the brook Besor, where there was left behind stayed. 
But David pursued he and 400 men for 200 abode behind, which were so faint that they could not go over the brook. Now listen, David has 600 men. God tells him to go out there. He said, go on, you can pursue, you can go after that, and without fail, you're going to recover all 600 started out, but 200 of them got faint. They couldn't go over. Sometimes everybody don't get to go over. Some people would never hit the field. But for those that do, those that behind still can pray. They were so faint, they were so tired that they couldn't go over. So David had to go with 400 instead of 600. But numbers don't mean nothing to God. God said one can put a thousand to fly. Two can put 10,000. So numbers don't mean nothing when it comes to God because the Bible said he can take a few and win the battle. Gideon took 300 and slew a whole nation. And it wasn't much they had to do because one thing, the enemy get confused when people praise God. That's why I said don't never lose your praise no matter what you go through because praise confuses the devil. He don't know what to do huh, when he giving you the worst day of your life but yet you get up and lift your hands up and tell God thank you. He don't know what to do. He get confused huh, when he see you pressing your way huh, and know your body ain't feeling good but yet you come out and say thank you. The devil get confused. Huh. He don't know what to do. Huh. Hallelujah. So what he do, he'll turn on his own self. And they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and gave him bread and he did eat and they made him drink water. And they gave him a piece of a cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. And when he had eaten, his spirit came again to him for he had eaten no bread nor drunk any water three days and three nights. And David said unto him, To whom belongest thou and whence art thou? And he said, I'm a young man of Egypt, servant to an Amalekite. And my master left me because three days ago I fell sick. Now here it is. Right, amen, when David is going over the brook, then got over the brook, all of a sudden God leaves an Egyptian boy. I tell you, God always leave a witness. He won't leave you out there by yourself in the wilderness and you don't know which way to go. Bible says, Dodge me in all thy ways, and I will direct thy path. He gonna leave somewhere an answer for you. He ain't gonna leave you out there by yourself and you don't know where you're going. Here this Egyptian done got sick. Young boy, his master said, I can't take you with me. You're slowing us down. You gotta stay behind. All of a sudden, David runs up on him and said, Well, who are you? Gave the boy something to eat and drink. He said, I'm an Egyptian. He said, I got sick three days ago. My master left me here. And here it is. He said, we made an invasion upon the south of the Chirites and upon the coast which belonged to Judah and upon the south of Caleb, and we burned Ziglag with fire. Now here he is. Don't know that David is looking for him. He said, well, three days ago we went through the coast. And when we got to Ziglag, we burned it with fire. He don't know even talking to the man that the city belongs to. We, we, we burned Ziglag up. Said so we made invasion, we burned Ziglag. And David said to him, Can thou bring me down to this company? And he said, Swear to me by God that thou would not kill me, nor deliver me into the hands of my master, and I will bring thee down to this company. So David said, Well, do you know where they at? Since you by yourself, do you know where they at? He said, well, if you tell me, you ain't going to kill me. And if you don't turn me over to my master, because if you do, he going to kill me. He said, I can take you exactly where they at. He said, I know where they at. I know where they going. I know where they at. It's good. God knows where we at every time. He know where the devil hiding at. The devil ain't hiding from God. God see him. He see him standing out there waiting on some of us to get out the door. He see him lingering around along the highways trying to make some of us have a wreck. That's why we pray for traveling grace and mercy wherever we go. Because the enemy, you don't know where he at. But he ain't hear from God. 
God know where he at all time. He got his eyes on him. He ain't doing nothing that God don't allow him to do. Here he is. He said, okay, I can take you down because I know where he at. And when he had brought him down, behold, they were spread abroad about the earth, eating, drinking, and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah. Now look, he gets down there and shows them where they're at and what are they doing? They having a party. They eating, drinking, dancing. That's what I said the devil pardoned on. He think he pardoned on some of us. He think he having a good time. Oh, I got him where I want him at now, laughing and grinning. Partying. Not only had they took stuff from the Philistines, but they had them went through Judah and took Judah stuff too. And David smote them from the twilight even until the evening of the next day. And there escaped not a man of them save 400 young men which rode upon camels and fled. Now listen, the Bible said when David got there, David smote them from twilight to the evening of the next day. Hey, amen. Once we get the devil by the tail, I ain't letting him loose. Amen. God mean for us to defeat our enemies. He mean for us to trample them down. Some things we got to cut the head off of. Sometimes we just wound the devil. I ain't trying to wound him. I'm trying to kill him. I'm trying to get him out for good. I'm trying to get him out of my house. Get him off of my money. Get him out of my family. I ain't trying to give him no bruise because if I bruise him, he'll come back with more force than what he had. But when you kill something it ain't coming back no more some of us need to cut the devil head cut him off at the source don't allow it to grow up some things you got to work with when it's young if you got boo boo at three years old you tell him to get over there and he tell you shut up i ain't doing nothing you don't wait till boo boo get five you need to straighten boo boo out at three If they clowning in the store, having a tantrum for some candy, wait till they get you in front of the clerk, then go to acting and having one of those fits. It don't take long. Put them in a place right in front of the clerk. When mines did it, she knew better. She knew I wasn't buying that. Don't show out in front of me in front of folks looking at me and you acting and screaming and acting a fool and people wondering what you finna do. I'm finna get you right here because I'm gonna let you know not to try me no more when you get me in the store. I'm gonna deal with you right in the buggy and in the basket. I'm gonna let you know don't you ever act that way again embarrassing me in front of. If you deal with them then, you ain't gotta worry about when they get six years old standing up looking at you and you don't know what to do and you feel embarrassed because they talking to you crazy in front of folks because you should have got them in the buggy. I got a little grand, great, not just a grandchild, I got a little great grandchild. I deal with her just like the rest of them. She can get away with anything at her mama's and her grandma's house. But I told her when you come to me, my house, the rules change. You ain't going to be breaking my stuff off the table. You going to put it down. You ain't going to be picking it up. You broke your grandma's good vase. If you think you're going to break my vase, I'm going to let you know right now. At me, my house, we ain't breaking nothing. You cute and I love you, but you ain't going to be tearing my stuff up. You got to cut it off when you see it. They sweet little things. We love them. But sometimes they need a couple of licks to get them straight. The rod of correction will help them. And I ain't saying just beat a child. I don't believe that. And I don't believe a child need a whooping for everything they do. There's some greater punishment that you can do with kids when they want something. I don't whoop mine all the time because they always doing something. So I just can't beat them every time they do something. Do I have a stick in my hand every day? A couple of them grandchildren-minded boys, they just seem to get into folly everywhere they go. So I can't just take a stick every time they bad and whoop them. 
I got to have something else so I think about what do they love most. They love outdoors and they love the park. So I just said, you know what? I ain't whooping you today. For a whole week, you ain't even going to the park. Man, they feelings be, they, I believe they rather say, get the belt, Grandma. You mean one whole week, a whole week? I want to see that room clean and fuzz you go. Now, don't step your boundaries out of this yard. You can go to that yard right to the end. At one foot, get over that boundary. You still going to be restrained from the park, but you're going to get a whooping too because that's my law. So they know that. So hit them where it hurts. Some of them like movies and candy. You ain't getting no candy today. Don't ask for none tomorrow either. Giving you nothing today. I ain't gonna whoop you. I just ain't gonna give you no candy. Shut that game off. Put that Nintendo PlayStation up. I don't wanna see your fingers touching nothing. But the broom and the dustpan. I don't wanna see no motion on no Nintendo. Get the broom and sweep up today. I know what to do with you. Ain't be no whooping. I'm going to hit you where it hurts. You got to hit the enemy where it hurts. I'm cutting you off right now. You thought you was going to have my child. I'm telling you right now she belongs to God. And David recovered all that the Malachites had carried away, and David rescued his two wives. Tell somebody, I feel rescue. I, I feel a rescue coming. You know when you get rescued, uh, the, the, the hero comes in and take you from the villain. Tell somebody, Jesus is the hero. He getting ready to snatch us from the villain hand. Huh? Hallelujah, Jesus. Some of us old enough to remember them old Batman movies and different stuff in the Devil is acting up, then on the screen pop up, meanwhile, in the background, Batman going to the cave, Superman going in the booth. Meanwhile, see, the devil ain't expecting that. Meanwhile, when chaos is going on, he don't know that my hero is in the back. He don't know that Jesus is getting ready to cut him off. And David recovered all. And David took all the flocks and the herds, which they drave before the other cattle and said, this is David's spoil. Come on, put your name in there and say, this is my spoil. I'm getting ready, amen, to have some spoils. Spoils of what you get after the battle. All the gold, all the riches, the garments. Those are the spoils that you get when you defeat an army. Right, so when we defeat the enemy, there are some spoils to be had in defeating the enemy. That's why we can't give up. We're going to stay on the battlefield. We're going to give him war because there's some spoils to be given out. And David came to 200 men, which were so faint that they could not follow David, whom they had made also to bide at the brook Besor. And they went to meet the people that were with him. And when David came near to the people, he saluted them. Then answered all the wicked men and men of Belial of those that went with David and said, Because they went not with us, we will not give them out of the spoil that we have recovered, say to every man his wife and his children, that they may lead them away and depart. Now look, David has won the battle. He's recovered all that he had. Not just all that he had. But David recovered more than actually what he lost because the Amalekites had invaded Philistine and Judah. So here he is, he's getting back double than what he started with. But he got a set of men with him that say, when they get back to the brook and see those that were too faint that couldn't go to battle, here it is, the group said, we don't get him nothing. They didn't fight. They stayed behind. But David looks at them. You know, it's funny that God is so good that he knows our condition. He knows where we at. He knows some of us can't go where others go. But he's such a good God that when he starts giving out, he gives a blessing to you also. The Bible says God sent his reign on the just and the unjust. Sometimes just by people being connected to you, they get a blessing, amen, that they ain't even worked for. 
they don't deserve it, but because of you, you get a blessing because God blessing me. Because God blessing you, God is blessing me. Everything that's connected to us get blessed whether they do anything or not. Our children get blessed. Our home get blessed. Co-workers get blessed. Just because of the connection that's with us. Amen. I, my brother is in the home. He's only maybe about a couple of miles, not even a couple of miles from me. And I go there every day. But uh, every day that I go and every week we do some, I do something special for everybody that's at his table. Now, see, they get a blessing because of my brother. I take whatever I'm taking my brother, whether it's pizza, cheese. I just ask them, what do y'all want this week? They'll put their order in. <laughs> they tell me how to fix it. Don't put no tomato on mine. Put some onions on. I said, what you want to drink, they all said. So they said, you know what? When I come through the door, you the good sister. They said, I wish I had a sister like you. One man looked at me and said, my family ain't worth two nickels rubbed together. <laughs> I felt bad for him. He said, but you a good sister. I said, Lord, I never even thought about. It. You know, I visited homes, hospitals, but I really found ministry in me when my brother got in the home. Because I didn't go there every day. But now I see God doing some things in my life. When I go in there, I just go in rooms and just start praying for people. I'm seeing deliverance in the home. Tears rolling down people's eyes. I be asking, God, give them a miracle, God. I speak over their life. I just go in there laying hands, and I be praying, saying, God, they need a miracle. God, you know they suffering. Give them a miracle. So I found something in me working when my brother got in the home that I didn't know was in me. And people are being delivered and blessed, and they're getting blessings because of the connection that I have with my brother. So that's what I'm saying. The connection that we have causes our surroundings, people to be blessed. On your job, people are blessed by your presence because when God pour out upon you, something runs over on them. And they don't even know why they being blessed. But it's because you the good sister, you the good brother, you standing there and you taking a blessing with you. And other people are being blessed because of you. So here David is. They saying, we don't want to give them nothing. They didn't work like we did. Just give them their family and tell them to take their family home. Then said, David, you shall not do so, my brethren. With that which the Lord has given us. See, David realized it's God that gave this to us. You didn't go out there and fight that battle by yourself. You didn't win that battle by yourself. It was God that was with us that caused us to triumph over our enemy. He says, the Lord that has given us this. Who have preserved us and delivered the company that came against us into our hand. He said, it was God that did the battle and that did the fighting. You weren't in that battlefield alone. He said, God was with you. We could have failed, but we had a God on our side that fought our battle with us, and he was the one that put all this stuff in our hand, and we ain't going to act like that. We got to share. Tell somebody, share the blessing. When you get a blessing, don't hold it all for yourself. Share it. When God do something with you, get up and tell somebody about it. You don't know how it's going to bless somebody else. Your testimony could be the testimony that'll bring your sister out. Get up and say, look, I was bound by drugs. I was bound by alcohol. I had a running around spirit. I couldn't stop clubbing. But one day God got a hold to me. One day the Holy Ghost got a hold to me and delivered me. All of a sudden somebody in the back spirit be quick then because they clubbing. They running around. her. They been drinking. her. They been doing drugs. All of a sudden they said, my God, if he did for them. Uh, he can do it for me. Uh, ain't nothing too hard for God. We limit God. But once we take the limit off, uh, God will move us. Uh, God will bless us. Your testimony can deliver somebody. Don't hold what God then gave you. Don't be ashamed. I don't care how, what it is. Don't be ashamed to tell somebody. Maybe you can't tell it all, but tell enough to help somebody. We can't tell everything now, but tell some enough to help somebody.
somebody. If you got to go private, so let me tell you, pull him to the side. Tell him, look, girl, I know where you're at right now. But let me tell you, God going to move for you. Some things we just personally can tell people when we know they're going through some things. On our jobs anywhere, personally, your life, you know they're going through a bad relationship. Don't sit there and don't say nothing. Just tell her, sister, look, God going to do something for you. I know where you're at. I ain't, I ain't got to tell it out loud. But I know where you're at because I went through an abusive situation. But I kept on praying. I kept on believing God. And God delivered me. All of a sudden, that sister feels something inside and said, what did he do for you? Let me tell you what he did, girl. God is good. God brought me out. Huh? I didn't think I was going to make it. Huh? I didn't know how I was going to pay the bill. Huh? But God did it for me. All of a sudden, they said, what did he do? Huh? Let me tell you again what God did. He brought me up out of a horrible pit. That's what David said. He said, for who will hearken unto you in this matter? But as his part is that goeth down to the battle, so shall it be that tarry by the stuff. They shall part alike. Listen, David said, look, even though they didn't make it to the battle, he said that they shall make it back. It's time for us in this hour to get ready to recover some stuff. Tell somebody I'm finna recover some stuff. I'm feeling restoration. I'm feeling more than what I had. I feel I'm getting ready to get back more than what I had. I feel the spirit of recovery getting ready to take place in the house of God. Tell somebody I'm finna get my stuff. Hallelujah. You know you got some stuff uh, that they have been holding up. Uh, you know you got some stuff uh, that the enemy took from you uh, and he holding it captive. But I need you to get bold enough. Uh, that's why Jesus say, uh, until now from the time uh, of John the Baptist, uh, until now uh, the kingdom of God suffered violence uh, and the violent taken by force. Tell somebody I'm finna get violent uh, on the devil. Uh, I'm gonna get violent. Uh, I'm finna get intense. Uh, Your sons and your daughters, huh? 
shall prophesy. Oh, men to dream dreams and have vision. I'm going to pull out a boom my handmaids. And they took it and forth and said, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Tell somebody I feel deliverance. I'm calling upon the name of the Lord. Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, I appreciate you. Jesus, I adore you. Jesus, I thank you. I'm calling upon you, Lord. You said there's deliverance in your name. There's healing in your name. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. We want it all back today. We claim it all back today. Give us our stuff back. Give it back to us. Let restoration be in our lives from this day forward. Let restoration rest in this church. Let restoration work in this church from this day forward. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we speak the spirit of restoration to flow in this ministry. The spirit of restoration to flow in this house. The spirit of restoration to flow upon these people in the name of Jesus. Lord, recover health. Lord, let them recover their health. Restoration in their bodies. Restoration in their spirits. Restoration naturally so and spiritually so. We declare today. We decree it today. Hallelujah. The spirit a restoration and recovery in this house and to everything that's connected to anyone in this house this day we speak recovery to everything that's connected whether it's family whether it's co-workers, whether it's somewhere, everybody else, we speak because they are connected to us, that they shall experience blessings. They shall experience restoration. They shall experience recovery because of the connection that you will bring them out. We believe you, God, to give us back double and everything that the enemy stole from us. We're getting it back, God. We're taking it back by force. We won't let the enemy have it. We decree it today. We're getting it back. We take it back hallelujah glory to God thank you Jesus come on praise him somebody hallelujah Jesus thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord hallelujah bless your name bless your name thank you Jesus glory to God hallelujah Lord we bless you we bless you today. Lift your hands up for just a minute. Let me get my oil. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, the young man back in the back, come before me with the check of his shirt on. Touch him. Come here. Come up before me. Thank you, Lord. 